Hello everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Decoding the Unknown. As always, I'm your host, Simon. What happens here? If you're new, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. If you're listening to this show as a podcast, why not review it? Well, probably because if you're brand new here and all you've heard so far is me blather on about asking for a review, you're not really feeling like it right now. But maybe at the end of today's episode, you will. What happens? Uh, Katie has written me a script and uh, I'm going to read it and then afterwards our wonderful producer on this channel Jen is going to add some images if you're watching some sounds if you're listening that's how we do it we're covering the mystery of Oak Island I don't really know anything about this people have been asking for this in the comments and it wasn't just on this channel people have been like asking me what cover Oak Island there's some treasure there or something I I wonder if it might be more of an American thing, this Oak Island, like buried treasure, because I have no idea where Oak Island is or anything about it. Uh, that's what we're going to find out today. They call it a cold read, where I, I read it. Never read this before. We're going to go on a little exploration journey together, dear listener. Let's go. <laughs> Pronunciation notes. Legina is Legina. Oh, okay, so it's not pronounced like... <laughs> Kate even makes the immediate joke that comes to my mind. Legina is not pronounced. Legina <laughs> is not pronounced like you know what. You know what rhymes with Legina. I'm definitely going to screw this all up throughout this episode, so uh, I apologize for that. Even though I've been told exactly how to pronounce it. Everybody loves buried treasure. The possibility that you might be inches away from a fortune is a siren's call that's lured people from across continents for hundreds of years, just like the lottery. <laughs> Which you shouldn't play because statistically you won't win. Please don't play the lottery. It's just a way of taking your money. Most will end up disappointed or probably worse off when they started, but it's those lucky few who strike it rich that keeps the dream alive for everyone else. One such hotspot for treasure seekers throughout the years has been Oak Island, a small privately owned island off the southern shore of Nova Scotia, Canada. The mysterious tale of what could lie beneath has had people searching since the 18th century in what has become the world's longest running treasure hunt. But what are they looking for? And why do they think it's there? Is there a curse protecting the treasure? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Let's dig into it. Dig into it. But I'm a bunch. <laughs> the history of the mystery. We're going to start with the proper treasure hunter version of the story. Oak Island is itself pretty small, covering an area of about 57 hectares or 140 acres. That is very small. Early European settlers to Nova Scotia, to the Nova Scotia area in the 1750s, had long whispered about a dying pirate from the notorious Captain Kidd's crew who confessed on his deathbed to having buried about two million pounds worth of treasure on Oak Island. He couldn't recover it himself, as it would reveal him to be a pirate, and he'd probably be arrested before being able to enjoy his spoils. I really thought that pirates burying their treasure was just a legend. Like, pirates would use their treasure to, like, buy things. They were pirates. They weren't like, oh, well, we better take that and invest it wisely. It's like, no, no, no. They took the treasure, and then they sold it for money, and then used it to buy shit. They didn't just bury it places. Why would you? Fast forward a little to 1795 and fresh-faced teen Daniel McInnes, aware of the local legend of a dying pirate whispering about his buried loot on the island, was going about his business one day when he found the remains of some sort of pulley or tackle block in a tree. Nearby, he noticed a depression in the ground and immediately, thinking of the buried treasure, he decided to try digging it up. He's not actually going to find treasure, is he? That would be the most amazing thing ever. Can you being a kid and actually finding treasure? I used to like think it'd be really cool to have like a metal. De In fact, I got a metal detector. My nan bought me a metal detector. It was like some toy one that I'm sure was a bit shit, and I never found anything with it. But having a metal detector as a kid, I always wanted it because you dream of finding treasure. I can't believe some that kid actually did it. I mean, we don't know if he did, maybe he didn't, but otherwise why would he be in this story? Along with a couple of friends, he got to work. A couple of feet down, they hit some flagstones, which would probably have signaled the end of my excavations, but they were ev evidently made of stronger stuff. They kept going, the earth under the flagstones being looser and easier to dig through. At ten feet down, just over three meters! These kids dug three meters deep? Damn! They uncovered a platform of oak logs. Weird. A sure sign this level was created by humans and not a naturally occurring geological feature. The logs were removed and the digging continued. A further 10 feet down. These kids are deep. This is dangerous. My parents would be like, yo, 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 fill in that hole. What are you doing? I remember with my cousin, 
I went to the beach and we dug a hole that was so deep. Like, I mean, we must have been like early teens and we just dug a properly deep hole that you had to climb down into. And eventually a lifeguard just came over and was like, boys, you have to fill the hole in. It's actually dangerous. <laughs> I was like, okay, but what are these kids up to? A further 10 feet down, they once again encountered a log platform. At 30 feet deep? What are you up to? This is amazing! They found yet another level of logs, and being quite out of puff by this point, they must have done this over many days, no? They asked some townspeople for help. None was forthcoming, so they had to abandon the dig, as it was just getting too hard for these young fellows to do by themselves. I'm presuming that they were also using ropes or ladders or something, as a 30-foot hole in loose earth is a heck of a climb back up. It wasn't until several years later, between 1802 and 1804, that the excavation of the pit resumed. They must have had, like, who are these kids? I'm so amazed. Maybe just kids in the past, they just had more gumption and less uh, less video games to distract. Because I'd be like, yeah, yeah, we dug it down about a foot. And then the earth got really hard and we just had like one shovel between us. So we, we just gave up and went home to play Xbox. That's what had happened to me as a kid. <laughs> A group called Onslow Company, which included Daniel McInnes and his two friends, returned to the island and the area, which had since become known as the Money Pit. They kept digging down, still finding the wooden platforms every 10 feet, and also incongruous materials such as coconut fiber. When the dig hit 90 feet, 27 and a half meters, a strange dark stone was found. Inscribed on it were symbols that nobody could translate at the time, but were much later decoded to read, 40 feet below, 2 million pounds are buried. Eventually, this is an, uh, is this, this reads like a fiction story. I love it. It's also definitely reminds me of something like, I feel like I've, I've read about this or heard about this somewhere. I might have even made a video about this at some point, but I've made so many videos, it's like, I definitely forget about all this stuff. But it does seem a bit more familiar to me now. Eventually, the Onslow company hit something hard, which some people thought to be a treasure chest, and decided to stop for the night and save the excitement of the discovery for the next morning. This turned out to be a foolish decision, however, as the shaft they had dug flooded with water overnight. After trying to get around this by digging a secondary tunnel, which also kept flooding, the project was once again put on hold. Some 40 years later, in 1848 or 1849, an outfit calling itself the Truro Company tried to become the next group to claim treasure hunting glory. Also stymied by the now regular flooding of the main tunnel, the Truro Company expanded the search to other areas of the island where they found further underground tunnel systems in an area known as Smith's Cove. What was going on on this island? I can't believe that pirates were actually burying their treasure. But then again, who would go to the effort of putting those logs every 10 feet and then putting a weird stone? Like, that's wild. After digging at another shaft to try and negate the flooded tunnels, the bottom of the original money pit hole collapsed, possibly sending the treasure even further down. The Truro Company uncovered a few artifacts such as a gold chain, such as some gold chain links and some wire, but admitted defeat and abandoned the dig in 1851 after funding dried up. The Oak Island Association was the next group to have a go, armed with pumps to try and keep the tunnels from flooding. It's a good idea. They again dug more shafts to try and access the original money pit and divert the flood water. They were also unsuccessful as the water kept coming back and Oak Island claimed its first victim when a pump exploded in 1861, killing one of the workers. Their search was abandoned in 1865 when funding again ran out. We better have solved this. <laughs> it's a hundred and something years ago. Nearly 200 years ago. No, not quite. Like 150 years ago, right? This better be solved. <laughs> Undeterred treasure hunters kept coming to the island throughout the rest of the 19th century, deepening the money pit to almost 160 feet, that's 49 meters underground. At this depth, a box was found containing pieces of parchment that allegedly pointed to documents by 16th century author Francis Bacon being part of the treasure trove. In 1897, the island claimed its second victim when a man fell to his death down one of the shafts. In 1868, excavators tried to discover which areas the flood water was coming from by pouring paint or dye into the hole, but the dye just fed out from several different locations around the island not really helping them. If this is all some elaborate pr prank, right, that some like old school pirate or dude back in the day just buried this stone saying there's loads of treasure here just as a prank, he'd be like, he probably didn't see it coming to this, did he? <laughs> With like people dying, I'm assuming millions of Canadian dollars being, or pounds or whatever they had back in the day uh, being spent on this. I mean, it's kind of intense. 
Entering the 20th century, people were still as convinced as ever that there was a giant haul of loot somewhere on this increasingly holy island. In 1909, future president of the USA, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was one of a group to further investigate the money pit, although nothing of much interest was found. After a constant stream of other attempts, Robert Restall arrived in 1959 with a small group to try his luck. Unfortunately, while digging in Smith's Cove in 1965, he passed out due to hydrogen sulfide fumes. In the rescue attempt, Restall, his son, and two other workers all lost their lives, bringing Oaks Treasure Island's hunting victims to six. And the death toll goes up. Excavators were getting serious now, and heavy machinery was starting to be used to help dig out those annoyingly flooded tunnels. Later, in 1965, a 200-meter, 656-foot-long causeway was built to attach the islands to the mainland so a crane could be brought across. This causeway is still in place today, all to hunt for some treasure. I mean, on the chance that you would find it, on the chance that it's actually there, I mean, how much are we really talking about here? It's not going to be two million, like, physical pounds, like... What would that be, like 2,000 tons of gold? That would be insane. Is there even 2,000 tons of gold in the world? I mean, probably. How much gold is there in the world? 244,000 metric tons. Isn't Google amazing? So yes, there'd, there'd be enough gold for that. Way, way enough. <laughs> it's a lot of gold. In 1969, most of Oak Island was bought by the Triton Alliance, and a new shaft known Elon Muskly as Borehole 10X was dug, going down to a whopping 235 feet or 72 meters. Cameras lowered into the hole recorded images of human skulls, tools, and treasure chests, but unfortunately the shaft collapsed before further work could be done. Oh, what? This is. It's like a fiction story. In 1981, another intriguing line of inquiry opened up. One member of the Triton Alliance, Fred no Nolan, found five boulders that formed a symmetrical cross. Not quite an X marks the spot, but in the middle was a sixth boulder with the image of a sword and a face. These are symbols linked to the Knights Templar, which in turn created the theory that legendary lost treasures, the Ark of the Covenant or even the Holy Grail, might be hidden on Oak Island. While the island was still being explored over the course of the 80s and early 1990s, legal battles over ownership and other financial financing problems brought most of the work to a halt. In 2007, yet another group was set up to search for the lost treasure. Oak Island Tours consisted, consisted of Dave Blankenship, the original founder of Triton Alliance, and rich Michigan bros Rick and Marty Legina, not Ricky Martin, not Rick and Morty, Rick and Marty, yes! In 2014, the brothers Legina entered, it's so hard not to say Legina. <laughs> Legina started documenting their explorations via a show on the History Channel called The Curse of Oak Island. This is a great idea for a show. Although, why do you have to call it The Curse A Curse? The Curse of Oak Island? That's only something the History Channel would do. Why not just call it Searching for Kick-Ass Treasure on, Lonely, on Oak Island with Rick and Marty? That's a brilliant name, and it doesn't involve any bullshit curses, History Channel. Why do you have to do this? In case you were wondering, The Curse refers to a legend saying that seven people would die before the Oak Island treasure is revealed. If you recall, six people have already died in the search, so place your bets on which brother is going to cop it before the other gets all the glory. Uh, neither of them, because it's not real. And even if one of them did die and then they find the treasure, it's still not real. It's just a coincidence. The real history. Ah, finally. <laughs> All right, you've heard the legend version featuring pirate treasure, a curse, a mysteriously engraved stone, and tantalizing glimpses of possible riches. Wait, 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 wait. I was saying, I, I was saying this whole time that it reads like a fiction story. Is this just basically a legend? Because it sounds, they seem to be like real groups and companies and people digging for this stuff, right? I mean, it does seem a little bit like all through, I'm like, you know, it sounds like fiction, which is another way of saying it's a little bit unbelievable, isn't it? Is this not real? Katie, have you led me down the garden path? And people listening to this knowing about Oak Island are probably like, Simon is absolutely falling for all this shit right now. Let's find out. All right, you've heard the legend version featuring pirate treasure, a curse, a mysteriously engraved stone, and tantalizing glimpses of possible riches. Let's go through and basically crap all over it then. Starting at the beginning, the whole story about teenager Daniel McInnes, or McGuinness, uh, is open to debate. As you can see, there's not even a consensus on how to spell his last name. Yeah, it's McInnes with an I, or McGuinness with a G. Most sources say that he was a teenager, but apparently he was actually a man in his late 30s. 
and he was on Oak Island to potentially buy a farm. While it's not a massive deal that he was 20 years older than most people thought, it does set the tone for the story of the island's treasure. And that's that it's all about hearsay. Nova Scotia had, has been explored by Europeans since at least the 1500s, with the Portuguese, Scottish, French, and English variously calling it home. This does mean that pirates could also have been paying visit to the small island over the years, stashing their loot away for future retrieval. Unfortunately, the whole dying pirate deathbed confession story that the settlers brought with them is just that. It's a story. There's absolutely no evidence for it whatsoever, and it also makes no real sense. Why would a pirate give away his lifetime of booty to anyone in the future who cared to have it? Surely two million quid of treasure in those days would be more than enough to keep you out of the reach of the law for any pirate-related activities. And were pirates really the saving type? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what I said at the beginning. And how did one man become the last person in the world with knowledge of this gigantic stash? Anyway, legends have a habit of sticking in our minds, so it's quite possible that McGuinness was thinking there might be something buried under the ground. Now, again, this whole part of the next story is totally unreliable. Nobody wrote anything down or recorded the initial dig in any way. Yeah, I mean, there's, the kids digging down like 30 feet is just like, come on, come on. They're children, they're teenagers. I mean, I was making a joke about them not having Xboxes to be distracted by, but 30 feet is a proper excavation. The story was not related until years later. We only have passed down hearsay that the men found these log platforms at the random spot McInnes had decided to dig. There are rumors again of trees forming a triangle and cut marks in the bark to give him a clue, but this was probably just made up later to add to the mystery. Nothing was documented until the Onslow company started searching in 1804, but this was also not particularly detailed and they didn't carry out the excavation as an archaeological project. They and every subsequent search party just dug straight down through whatever they found, potentially destroying useful information along the way. In the legend version, there are log platforms every 10 feet down the original money pit to about 90 feet deep. In recorded versions, it's only stated that there are markings every 10 feet or so, which really could mean anything and reduces the impact of the idea that these were man-made platforms. So all of this stuff that's just really crazy and unbelievable turns out to be unbelievable. Shocking. The story was too cool. That's the problem. The story was too cool. So what about the engraved stone stating that there's only 40 feet to go before you reach the treasure? Well, let's have a look at it. Oh, we can't because no one's seen it since the late 1800s and there are varying reports of it having inscriptions or just being a big old stone with nothing on it. If there were inscriptions, nobody took a rubbing, copied them, or seemed in any way curious as to what they might mean. The purported inscription you can find now is just made up of what looked like standard symbols and was cracked by a simple letter substitution that apparently nobody was able to work out in the hundreds of years between it being found and the message being revealed. The code was eventually passed on by people vaguely remembering what it looked like after maybe having seen it a couple of times, so how it managed to survive intact and turn out to be this very specific message is incredibly suspicious. It's not just incredibly suspicious, it's basically entirely unbelievable, and I can beginning to see why the History Channel chose to pick this up. The message, which was 40 feet below, 2 million pounds are buried, is not in itself very much help. So why was it even coded in the first place? Plus, the money pit went way further than 40 feet under the stone and nothing of value was ever found. The stone seems to be an unprovable red herring. Seems to be a lot of unprovable red herrings, doesn't there? Let's move on to the mysterious flooding of the money pit, just when they were getting to the good bits. Some people think that the treasure was protected by booby traps and that the diggers had activated the flooding system as they got closer. Or, or alternatively, you're on an island and when you dig down, you're going to get to the water table, aren't you? Because you're on an island. I mean, anyway, you're going to get to the water table eventually and it's going to flood. You, 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 come on, there's no booby traps. Due to all the many other shafts dug, the natural geology of the island and the systems under it, it's been difficult to tell where the water had been coming from, but a more recent dye test by the Legina's has shown that it's likely connected to a channel from the Smith's Cove area of the island some 520 feet, 158 meters away. It's still not clear whether this is just a natural channel or a pirate-made booby trap, but I'm starting to swing towards the non-man-made explanations for the whole thing. Yeah, water table, underwater channel, whatever, it's natural. No one's digging burying their treasure, all of this crazy and then digging some complicated like ancient Egypt pharaoh style trap. Come on. No. Also, as the tunnel has been flooded for two centuries, what are the chances that anything in there is still worth having? Well, I mean, gold's definitely not gonna like decay or anything, is it? 
And what about the cameras put down Borehole 10X in the early 1970s? Reports came back of human remains and possible treasure chests, but watching it today, the footage is pretty grainy, and the shadows, water, and video quality make it hard to even work out the orientation of things that you might be looking at. It's just a matter of seeing what you want to see. There's no obvious chest, skull, or anything really, and the tunnel collapsed shortly afterwards, reburying whatever might have been there in the first place, which was probably nothing. So, let's sidestep this whole mess and talk about some of the things that people have thought might be buried on the island. It's a pretty crazy list, and just imagine if all of this totally unconnected stuff is actually there. That'd have me eating my words at the tea party thrown by the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you what, I'll literally save this script, and I will slowly consume it if uh, it turns out that they find... Um, two million pounds worth of treasure on this island. And I don't mean they find like some little coins from back in the day. I mean they find a proper big ass treasure hole. Then I will eat this script. I will eat it. Slowly over time. I obviously can't eat it all in one session or I'll probably die. But I'll eat little pieces of it over time. <laughs> I'm not going to have to do it there, am I? Because I'm just not. Treasure Theories so we know the one about pirate treasure possibly from captain kidd who sailed the seas in the late 17th century and was really yes really known to have stashed small amounts of treasure in various places oh there you go a pirate who did bury his treasure simon not such a big brain after all the thing that makes this whole pirate loot theory fall apart for me is that it just seems to involve way too much effort if you're a swashbuckling scurvy sea dog who's doing quite well it makes sense to hide a bit of gold here and there for future use i get that but how much effort would you go to to hide it would you dig a hole over 200 feet 61 meters deep and then construct multiple log platforms to block the way down wouldn't they serve as obvious markers that something was down there and then would you really have the time to set up and dig out some elaborate flooding booby trap tunnel that nobody's been able to figure out in over 200 years it all seems a bit far-fetched speaking of far-fetched let's look at what else is supposedly possibly buried on oak island i mentioned the knights templar and the ark of the covenant or holy grail before yes if you hear buried treasure and see a hint of religious iconography you're going to jump straight to the biggest lost treasures there are the knights templar were disbanded in the early 1300s so if they did make it to canada they were pretty far ahead of the game <laughs> yes it's possible that their treasure was passed to other religious orders or the freemasons and were then hidden on oak island at a later day but nothing substantive has been found so far and while obviously none of this impossible is impossible it just seems absolutely wildly unlikely a couple of templar connected things have been found but most of them are symbolic like the supposed cross made up of boulders this also seems a bit sus the island is very small and it was only in the 1980s that the five boulders were noted as being in a cross formation from above the man who discovered the cross fred nolan dug in the center of it and unearthed another boulder that was roughly in the shape of a head the legend version calls this a stone with a head and a sword on it but it really is just one of those objects that can look like a head if you want it to yeah it's just the human brain just we're spotting patterns in absolutely nothing it's the same reason you look at clouds and be like oh that one looks a bit like a lion doesn't it ah it's like it's not a lion you know it's not a lion it's just a cloud that looks like a lion it doesn't even really look like a lion it's just humans are really good at spotting patterns even when they're not there and there was no sword symbol and just an indented area that excavators decided could be a place to rest a sword the other issue i have with all of this is that the nolan cross from above does not look like the traditional templar cross which is a symmetrical one with arms of all equal length the one fred discovered on his land is much longer with the arms connecting nearer the top i'm not opposed to the possibility of there being templar artifacts on the islands but the holy grail well give me a break something else that might be on the island apparently is a load of documents by francis bacon that will prove that he's the true author of shakespeare's works oh this is painfully wrong this is the 16th century statesman francis bacon not the 20th century unsettling artist francis bacon although at this point it's just as likely that a folio of his undiscovered works are also hidden somewhere on the island yeah entirely this is truly ridiculous i mean if you're listening to this and you believe that on oak island there's a document stash from a dude called francis bacon saying that he's the author of shakespeare's plays you need to smoke less crack 
To be honest, I have absolutely no clue as to how or why this Shakespeare theory is even a thing. This was found in 1897. No other paper or documents have been found since then. It's been stated that the visible link formed the letters of VI or WI, but it is not conclusive and looks more like an R to me. Did someone extrapolate William Shakespeare from this total piece of nothing? Well, there is an R in Shakespeare, so uh, it could have been part of that. I mean, come on, Katie. Easily. Not really. That's a joke. Theories also popped up that clues in Shakespeare's works pointed to Francis Bacon being the author, and someone even managed to wrangle a destination near Oak Island out of random capitalizations in his works, but it all seems pretty ropey to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, also in the past, they didn't really give a shit about like capitalization and grammar and stuff. They just made it up as they went along. Like, looking at original Shakespeare, like, what is this? <laughs> Do you even know English? And it's Shakespeare. Let's have another one. The Jewels of Mary Antoinette. I mean, why not? This was the favorite theory of Franklin D. Roosevelt, who was a bit, a bit of an Oak Island nut. I absolutely assumed that Katie was putting that in there as a joke, but uh, apparently not. FDR, come on, man. You're cooler than that. Prior to her arrest by the revolutionaries, Marie Antoinette gave her favorite jewels to a maid who smuggled them out of the palace and ended up hiding them in a deep hole on a small island off the coast of Nova Scotia. Of course, this theory was considered fairly credible and seemed to be very popular until 2018, where when a veritable treasure trove, you might say, of her jewelry was auctioned by Sotheby's. Far from being in a damp hole in the ground this whole time, they were actually in possession of Mary Antoinette's heirs, and the ten items, made up of mostly exquisite diamonds and pearl pieces, sold for a combined $42.7 million. Holy shit. So yes, quite a haul if they'd been buried on Oak Island, but they weren't. They were passed down to her heirs. Can you imagine just having a bag of Marie Antoinette stuff? You'd be like, oh my god, we're gonna be so rich. It's like our great, 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 great grandmother. Yes! 42.7 minutes. She must have a lot of descendants, though. Other theories. There are other less outlandish theories as to what might be under Oak Island. A popular one is that it's the spoils of a wrecked Spanish galleon found by the English aristocrat William Pipps. He had already looted it once before and was tasked with finding more funds to help overthrow the unpopular Catholic king, James II. Pips went back to his secret sunken ship, that is a tongue twister, and his crew decided to put a bit aside for themselves on Oak Island. While they were trying to do this, however, an underground cavern collapsed and flooded, effectively making it impossible to retrieve the treasure. All of that is just infinitely more likely than anything that has been mentioned so far. The money pit for that is what they dug was sealed off by pips and they went back to England and admitted that it lost all the loot on the island. Sometime in the 1750s, the British came back to dig more tunnels to booby trap the treasure, ensuring that nobody would ever be able to get their hands on it. Well, why didn't they just dig it up and take it home? Makes no sense. There have been some wood and tools found which date to the right period, and it seems more likely that if the tunnels were purposefully made to flood, an organized group with the remit to do just that are more than likely to have dug it than a group of pirates, are more likely to have dug it than a group of pirates, but I'm still hung up on why anyone even thinks there's treasure there at all. Yeah. It's just super unlikely, isn't it? Another idea is that the money pit is actually a Viking ship that's been sucked into a sinkhole and is standing on end. Okay, because of the the wood things that they're digging through, this is ridiculous. This is actually ridiculous. The log plat again, I will eat the script if this turns out to be true. It's like, yeah, 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 we dug those log platforms and it turns out to be a Viking ship pointed like vertical and there's treasure in it. Another thing, if they find I will eat this script slowly over time, a piece at a time. The log platforms could be seat rests for rowers. Not really convincing stuff, is it? Where is any other, other evidence of a ship, and how did it get onto the mainland and then fall vertically into a hole? Also, as previously mentioned, we have no physical or written evidence of the finding of these wooden platforms. It's literally word of mouth from 1795, and in case you didn't know, that's a really long time ago. And while there might have been something there, it might have just been lost in the retelling, and something like branches or a few logs, which might have naturally fallen in and been covered up over time, turned into the regularly spaced wooden platforms in the Treasure Hunter version. This leads on to another credible idea that the whole pit is just a big old sinkhole. There has been at least one other sinkhole found on Oak Island, and it would explain how the ground was easy to dig. Anything found in the shaft could just be flotsam or jetsam, washed up and onto the island over time, or just left behind by indigenous people, early Europeans, or any of the many 
many, many previous digging teams. The coconut fibers found in the tunnel seem to be some proof that humans created the tunnel system. Coconut trees are obviously not native to Canada, but the fibers were commonly used as packing materials and were also made into rope in the 18th and 19th centuries, so any found since then might be remnants from previous excavations. As this was not an uncommon area for ships to be in, it might also just be debris left over from other visitors to the island or something that had been washed up and accumulated from nearby shipwrecks or lost cargo. Ah yes, actually reasonable explanations for all of this stuff. And what of this very specific curse of seven people dying before the treasure is revealed? Was it written down somewhere and then discovered during an excavation? Was it part of the original story from the dying pirate? No, it just sort of sprung up out of nowhere as these things do. I'm not even sure if it started before or after the current death toll of six workers on the island. But maybe one of the Legionists should do the decent thing, which would finally solve the mystery either way. There's no mystery. There's no curse. It's just ridiculous. And it's ridiculous the History Channel of a show about this. Artifacts found. And what have they found in 225 years of digging? Well, not a whole lot. Probably less, in fact, than you'll find almost anywhere else on the planet. Okay, that's not a fact, but there is very little to show for the amount of work that's been put into plumbing the depths of the island for all it's worth. There is a list of artifacts on on the oakislandmystery.com. That's all as one word, and it was hard to read all as one word. Oakislandmystery.com, uh, and one of them is listed as a valuable item from a money pit. Sounds intriguing. Was it, perchance, a piece of gold or anything at all that might give credence to there being actual treasure underground? Nope, it was reported in a newspaper that in 1849 a man with the possibly made-up name of Pit Blado was seen pocketing an item he took off the end of his drill. The person reporting this to the papers just seems to have decided for himself that it was valuable. So maybe the 19th century teams just stole everything for themselves. Also, the newspaper report was from 1862, some 13 years after the alleged pocketing. So this website claims that something's valuable, when really it's a second-hand or a third-hand story from someone who saw something which doesn't sound like that convincing at all. This never happens. It never happens. With razor-sharp cataloging and reporting like this, it's no wonder the seam of hope has been left alive for future generations to mine. But really, there had been really there has been barely anything of note found on the island. The gold chain that's bandied about wasn't a gold necklace or some nice thick links, but rather something that could have fallen off a military uniform. And it was found in 1849, with no other context given as to what else might have been with it. On the History Channel's website, there is a list of top 25 treasures found on the island so far, but a quick perusal will tell you that treasures is a clickbait title if there ever was one. Shocking behavior from the History Channel right there, isn't it? Coming in at number one is the money pit itself, which is not necessarily a treasure and has not divulged any treasure thus far. Also included on this list are the dull as all buggery coconut fibers and a Roman sword, which would have been a colossal find as the Romans didn't make it to North America as far as anyone knows. <laughs> they did not. Well, as you might have guessed, the sword was just a modern replica and totally worthless. And that is an item that makes it onto the History Channel's website of most valuable items. A piece of sh Roman replica sword that someone just left on the island. Next up, yeah, it's an empty can of Diet Coke that someone left behind. History Channel. Everybody. History Channel. In the present day, the Legionas haven't found much either, with their haul so far totaling about one coin and a silver button, which can be topped in about half an hour these days by anybody, anywhere, with a metal detector. Yes, I mean, their greatest treasure, though, has been the money that they've made from a show on the History Channel. So why do people keep digging here when there doesn't appear to be much of a reason to keep digging? A budget from the History Channel. <laughs> The current owners are basically totally invested in the search now and have a History Channel show to prove it. Thank you. They've dragged it out a bit. The Curse of Oak Island started in 2014, and eight seasons and 140 episodes later, the treasure is yet to be unearthed. How do you do it, History Channel? How do you do it? How would I make 140 episodes that was just basically what we've covered today? It's amazing, and I don't understand how people still watch that crap. Allegedly in my opinion. Is this a canny ploy by the brothers to spin it out for as long as possible? Yes, it is. How long can they go before admitting defeat? It's well, when the views and the money dry up. That's how long. It's not clear how much money has been spent on excavating Oak Island, but it's definitely spiraling into the multi-millions now. 
While Marty Legina and his business partner are apparently partially funding the current dig, they likely also receive funding from other investors, the History Channel, tourism to the island, and possibly grants from the Canadian government. Canadian government, why are you wasting money on this? In researching the history of Oak Island, all I can conclude is that the money pit is so called not because there's a ton of money in it, but I know where this is going, but because of the amount that's been chucked in by gullible fools throughout the centuries and the History Channel. And the so-called curse is not something that's haunting the islands to protect the treasure, it's something intangible, the lust for gold, that's taken hold of these people and won't let go until it's bled them all financially dry. If there ever was any loot in a hole on the island, with all the tunnel floodings and collapses, it's likely past the point of retrieval by now. Of course, I shall be as excited as the next person if anything ever does pop up but I'm not holding my breath. And I'm not excited about it, because if they do find two million pounds of treasure, eating this script, aren't I? And this has been an episode of Decoding the Unknown. I do hope you enjoyed it, our sarcastic troll through the treasure on Oak Island. So if you're planning a trip there, well, hopefully you're not anymore, because it's a total waste of time. If you enjoy this show and you're listening to it as a podcast, please do leave it a review. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed. And thank you for watching.